what is up YouTube just wanted to show you guys my Navi as you can tell by the title and looking at it I've lowered it might be the first one to lower it at least in the US uh, I know Steady Garage did for their bike that Honda showed off at the Navi launch event It was surprisingly easy to do. You don't even need that much and it takes about an hour, maybe a little more. And I know you're gonna ask about the headlight. I'll make another video about that. Don't worry about it. All right, so to start for the front, you're gonna wanna take these off and then the fender off. These caps are held on with one Phillips head screw and the fender has three eight millimeter bolts on this side and three eight millimeter bolts on the other side. Can't find my eight millimeter socket. So I have a metric, I think five sixteenths. Uh, I think that's about eight millimeters. This is completely optional, but here on the fender, there's a rubber loop that's holding the brake lines in place. It was a huge pain in the ass doing this and it doesn't let you take the fender off. So I just cut it and then you can push this through. And then either leave it as a hole or just flip it around and put it back in and it looks just fine. And then to take the wheel off on the left side, it's a 14 millimeter. And then on the right side, it's a 19 millimeter. My axle wanted to keep spinning as I was trying to take it apart. So hold the 14 millimeter in place on the left and then just turn this nut on the right. And the opposite works just as well. Holding it in place with the 19 and then using a ratchet on the 14. And she's gone. Now that the axle nut is off, you need to get this axle out. Uh, if it's giving you trouble, you can hit it with like a rubber hammer or a screwdriver or something just to get it to move. And then you come to the other side and you just pull it out. Once everything's out, it's a good idea to put everything together. That way you don't use it. This is a spacer that's on the wheel. It goes in there and it likes to fall out. So watch for that. This is also a good time to check out your brake shoes if you're interested. There's a cat if you're interested. Now with your wheel off, you're getting the fun part. You can take these dust shields down like that. Here inside the fork tube, there is a snap ring. You can see the two holes for it right there. What you need to do is get your snap ring pliers in each of those holes, compress it, and pull it out. Once you do that, you can take the entire fork assembly out. And then you're gonna go from this to this. Inside each fork assembly is a big rubber stopper and a very big spring covered in thick green grease. They really loaded up these with grease. I mean, Honda was not skimping on this stuff at all. The one in my left fell right out on its own the one in the right wanted to stay. So for that, I just took a long piece of wire and bent it on the end and then fished it up there so that I could knock it loose. You can take out just the spring or just the rubber stopper or take out both. I tried it with just the spring out and it felt kind of bad. So I didn't go with that. And I tried it with just the rubber stopper out and it didn't really lower it all that much. So I just took both out. And then after you decide what you want to do, you're just going to put everything back together. Make sure you put the snap rings in place to hold everything back in. And now, after you push the dust cover back up, you're going to go from this fork length to this. It's a pretty decent difference, especially because you're not paying for anything and it's completely reversible. If you don't like it, take it apart and put everything back in. And then for the back, it's as easy as switching out the rear shock, which reminds me, let's talk about shocks for a minute. 
This is the stock shock for the Honda Navi. It's about 13 and a half inches long. And this is a shock from a kid's dirt bike. And it's about eight and a half inches long. Notice they both have the same end. This, this U shape is called a clevis. I'll put it on the screen. And this on the bike itself is a clevis. If you search clevis and shock absorber, you're gonna get plenty of options. If somebody is thinking of getting this one, I'm gonna save you the time, don't. I can compress this with just my hand. As soon as you put it on the bike, it immediately is bottoming out. Now I'm sure everybody wants me to answer, how much ground clearance do you actually have if you do this? Uh, well, at its lowest point, when it's not tipped over on its kickstand, uh, it's about three inches. Over in the front, it's more like five. Now, how does it feel? It feels a little different. It's a lot stiffer. Uh, if you hit bumps in the road, you're definitely gonna feel it more. But between the give of the tire and the give of the seat, uh, it feels pretty good. It also helps that there's another small spring built into the fork assembly itself. But again, the best part of this is that it's a free mod. All you have to do is take some stuff apart. And if you don't like it, put it back together. Now, one major drawback of this is that this plastic piece that sits here in the tail section, it's gotta go. And this is where the lock for the seat release goes. So I took this out and I just moved it to here. Drilled a small hole, put it in, secured it, that's it. There's just a clip that holds it in on the back. I decided I'm gonna do this permanently, so that's where it is. It still works like it should, so I'm fine with it. I originally tried this with this plastic piece in, but it was hitting the carburetor. The kickstand was then way too long, so I cut that down. Uh, it, I'd use my grinder with a diamond edge wheel. It, it cut really, really easily. I'm kind of hoping the frame is not made of the same metal. This part of the kickstand had a cut as well. Just bent it down so that it holds the spring in place. Everything still functions as it should. For now, I'm just using a rubber furniture foot to cover up the end of the kickstand. That way I don't get it rusty and dirty. But honestly, everything on this bike is so universal that I feel like I could take a kickstand from a pocket bike and fit it on there. So I'll probably give that a shot. I would love to get some footage of me riding this. Um, I'll have to leave that for a part two because it's snowing again. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to it. I'll make a part two for you. If you want it to stop snowing too, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. <laughs>